What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 8 video. Today I have something a little bit different for you, we're going to be doing a discussion video on what is the best restricted Pokemon for this series. Of course the series is coming to an end soon, which is why I think now is a better time to be talking about it. We have a lot of hindsight, uh, we have a lot of data, and I, I just feel like it's the right time to discuss this sort of thing. So. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content, and answer my comment question of the day. I have two for you today. One, what do you think is the best restricted Pokemon? And two, what do you think about me doing Nuzlocke videos in the future? It wouldn't obviously overtake the VGC stuff, but I think it'd be a fun little side series, so yeah. Let me know, but let's go ahead and get into it. So I have gotten what I believe to be the top five best restricted Pokemon in the format. Of course, with Pokemon like Calyrex and Groudon, you could make a case for other Pokemon to take their place, but I do believe that these are the top three at the moment, with Groudon maybe, maybe edging out Calyrex in certain situations. But I'm going to go over uh, what they do, why they're used, and also I have some usage stats regarding their usage in the previous Players' Cup. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, Zacian Crown has been a phenomenal Pokemon in this format. Uh, basically, it's able to pair up with a variety of things. We've seen it on compositions such as Lapdog, which is Laprization, Coldog, which is Colossal Zacian, and I've even tested with Regigigas Zacian. Basically, because Zacian doesn't need to Dynamax, and also it can't Dynamax, uh, and has access to the move Behemoth Blade, which doubles on uh, contact with a Dynamax Pokemon. It does a ton of damage and automatically gets plus one when it hits the field. It's a very, very hyper offensive Pokemon that is able to, it's able to go toe to toe with Dynamax Pokemon and not really, you know, care too much. Matter of fact, it's almost incentivized not to Dynamax in front of a Zacian if it's outspeeding you, since even if you resist a Behemoth Blade, it's doing the same amount of damage as a non-resisted move, which is kind of crazy uh, when you consider this thing's at plus one attack. So, you know, plus one coming off of 170 is insane. Zacian also really enjoys pairing up with a variety of Pokemon, especially uh, Thunderous. Let me pull up Zacian's usage stats here. As you can see in the format overall, it's at 24% usage. It likes pairing up with things like Incineroar, Lapras, Thunderous, Landorus, uh, Amoongus, Rillaboom, uh, and it's just a really solid Pokemon overall. The fact that people started running Swords Dance and Substitute with it is really threatening too. That high speed lets you actually go for Substitutes pretty safely if someone wants to um, I guess the way I'm saying it is, when you're facing Zacian, you're more likely to want to click Protect on a Pokemon that is um, weak to it, right? So, with Zacian being such a hyper-offensive and threatening Pokemon, you can make some really aggressive plays like Swords Dancing on their... Or even going for a Substitute on their Protect, which still nets you a Swords Dance if they decide to uh, attack into it next turn. So, Zacian overall is a phenomenal Pokemon. I strongly believe that it's actually the best restricted in the format. Some people might make a case for uh, Kyogre being the best restricted, but I honestly think that it's really hard to uh, outclass Zacian overall. However, that's just like in terms of usage and how easy it is to use. I guess. Zacian is one of the easiest restricteds to use, and it's also one of the most consistent restricteds, which is why I put it at the top of my list. Next up we have Kyogre, um, which it's a really hyper offensive Pokemon too, however it is able to Dynamax and it isn't quite as fast as Zacian, so it does require some heavy support uh, to get going. Usually this is in the form of Kyogre plus Tornadus, also known as Tornogre. Uh, essentially what you want to do is you use Tornadus on the first turn to either deny a Trick Room via Taunt uh, or go for a Tailwind and allow your Kyogre to go for a very powerful Water Spout with Rain Up since it has the ability Drizzle. Mystic Water on top of that makes it do a ton of damage and it's coming off of a base 150 special attack stat so it's doing crazy amounts of damage to everything. There aren't many Pokemon that can deal with it however it has had trouble versus Porygon 2 and Grimmsnarl uh, since Grimmsnarl is able to set up things like Light Screen. At plus two, Kyogre is actually going to be able to outspeed Timid Regieleki if you yourself are running a Timid Nature, uh, which is really good for it. However, there have been some really crazy people running stuff like uh, Choice Scarf Regieleki, which I don't think is very good. However, Focus Ash Regieleki can put a, uh, a a huge dent in this plan because it's able to hit Kyogre with an Electro Web or just a very powerful Thunderbolt before getting out of there. Uh, but yeah, Regieleki is kind of problematic for this core. On top of that. Um, if Tornadus leaves the field or is no longer able to fight, uh, Kyogre will struggle versus things like Rillaboom and Kartana, 
Uh, Tornadus Kyogre is just a really solid synergistic core because Tornadus is able to deal with those problematic ground types while, or problematic grass types while also being able to set up Tailwind for Kyogre and deny Trick Room, uh, where Kyogre is more doing the heavy lifting of the team. On top of that, with such a solid HP and bulk, uh, Dynamaxing this thing makes it pretty difficult to take out, so I think Kyogre is a really solid pick in the format. As well as with usage stats, you can see Kyogre is really popular. It's at 15% usage, it's in top 10. Uh, and if you actually look at what Kyogre's run with, it's pretty similar to what Zacian's run with. Uh, you want to run it next to Incineroar. Uh, however, Regieleki is really common on this core as well because it does allow an extra little bit of speed control, especially next to that Tornadus. You can actually counter lead a Tornadus Kyogre team with Tornadus Regieleki, which really makes them uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, Kyogre is also really nice next to things like Amoongus and Ferrothorn. Generally speaking, you have a, you know, you have a pretty wide variety of grass types you could run this thing with. Rillaboom is even on that list uh, to an extent. And uh, if you want to run a slower Kyogre and not actually just run 252, 252, you can actually make it so it's a bit of a bulkier Pokemon with the option of running it next to P2 for Trick Room. So Kyogre is really strong. On top of that, under Tailwind, it's going to be doing a ton of damage to other restricted Pokemon. Calyrex in both forms as well as Zacian do not want to deal with that. Groudon, if it can't get the sun up, it won't be able to take that hit. However, a lot of people have resorted to running more specially defensive Groudon to actually deal with this. So Kyogre overall, I'd say matchup wise, is really good versus the majority of the metagame, which is why it's so high in usage right now. Next up is Calyrex Ice. I think Calyrex Ice is a Pokemon that people thought was going to be outclassed by Calyrex Shadow at first, but then they realized just how bulky and insane this Pokemon can be. I, I have a little bit of a catchphrase when I use it. I think that resisting Glacial Lance is a myth. I'll just say that. I always say, you don't resist Glacial Lance, that is actually a myth. And that's just because this Pokemon does so much damage. The ability as one makes it so Pokemon like Incineroar uh, or... I don't know, even like Heatran, if you see that once in a while, I guess, uh, won't actually be able to eat things like sugar berries or even figgy berries or citrus berries since uh, it has the ability Unnerve built in. On top of that, the other ability, Chilling Nay, will make it so with every KO that Calyrex gets, it essentially gets a free Moxie boost. Uh, and with the move Glacial Lance being a double targeting base 130 ice move, one it, like literally, if any other Pokemon had this, they would be A tier. Like, they, they would be amazing. Uh, like, Glacial Lance has the possibility of picking up two KOs, or even just the chance of picking up a KO on any Pokemon in the field, makes it really easy for Glacier to get these uh, attack boosts, and at that point if you're at plus one it's really difficult, or not Glacier, it makes it really difficult for uh, any Pokemon to actually switch in on Calyrex, so yeah, Calyrex is a really powerful Pokemon. It'll usually run a Life Orb, however weakness policy has been seen as well next to things like Mimikyu or Dusclop since you can self Shadow Sneak and do a ton of damage with that. Like I said, resisting Glacial Lance is a myth, but if you're at plus two, nothing actually resists it. Trick Room is really nice for this Pokemon since it's able to pair up with things like P2 or other Trick Room users and sort of give an air of ambiguity as to which Pokemon they need to taunt. High Horsepower is a really solid option for dealing with fire types, uh, especially Incineroar since Incineroar is actually going to be a really decent switch into Calyrex if it's trying to switch in on, on the ice move. It'll get it to minus one with Intimidate. However, uh, I believe after a Glacial Lance, or even after a Max Hail Storm, uh, Incinera won't be able to take a Max Quake, so that's sort of an essential on this thing. However, I have seen people running Heavy Slam as uh, a way to get off Max Steel Spikes, which is useful for the Calyrex Mirror. However, I am a big proponent of running Protect on this thing, so. Calyrex overall, matchup-wise, it, you know, you'd think it'd do pretty bad against Kyogre, but if the Trick Room's up, Kyogre doesn't really stand a chance versus this thing. Uh, like I said, you don't resist Glacial Lance, Kyogre doesn't want to take it. It's a bit more frail on the physical side, even if it is pretty bulky anyways. Uh, Groudon does not enjoy the Calyrex matchup once Trick Room's up. Basically, nothing enjoys the Calyrex matchup if Trick Room's up. Uh, Calyrex is going to be able to max Quake uh, Zacian Crowned, and it's going to be able to go for a Max Hailstorm or a Glacial Lance on anything else. So, yeah, I think that this is actually one of the better Pokemon in the format, even if it was slept on originally. Uh, if you see things it's used next to, we definitely see things like Tapu Fini uh, to prevent... Uh, burns and stuff. Incineroar is a really solid Pokemon for faking out taunt users. Dusclops is really great for self-proc weakness policy. Amoongus is great under Trick Room, and it's usually just the general support Pokemon that make Calyrex Ice as good as it, as, good as it is. Um, I personally used one in my Player's Cup run, however I didn't make top 16, so I don't really get much say into how to use it, I just think it's a really good Pokemon. Next up is Groudon, which is honestly a bit of a controversial Pokemon. Uh, Groudon is... It, most people would say it's not worth the restricted slot, but it's more of an excuse to use things like Venusaur and Charizard in my opinion. Being able to set up Drought 
makes Venusaur able to outspeed pretty much everything in the format and go for sleep powders. This also nets things, uh, this also nets Groudon pretty much a free swords dance. And Gmax Wildfire in the sun is pretty much the strongest move in the game. Uh, the fact that Charizard is at a decent speed tier and outspeeds most restricted Pokemon, as well as is able to take on Satian Crown really effectively, means that it's it's a really good Pokemon. I would say that if you're using Groudon, it hardly even counts as your restricted. Charizard and Venusaur together are like the restricted of your team. It does so well with them. Uh, however, Groudon itself is something that we should be talking about. Like I said, more people are sort of aiming towards running a more specially defensive Groudon, which allows them to tank hits like Water Spout when the sun's up, as well as a Max Geyser when the sun's up. It actually eats hits really, really well. Uh, Citrus Berry and White Herb are things that people will want to run with Groudon, and it usually runs um, Rock Slide or Stone Edge as a means of dealing with Thunderous and uh, Tornadus. However, uh, it does actually like to run uh, Swords Dance as well, since if you're able to get off a of Sleep Powder, Plus two Groudon is something that's very difficult to deal with, especially if you're running a White Herb on it. So yeah, uh, the main issue with Groudon is while Kyogre can comfortably run Water Spout and Origin Pulse, Origin Pulse being the less accurate of the two, and Water Spout being the more accurate of the two, which rewards good board positioning, Groudon doesn't really have an option for that. In previous formats, when Primal Groudon was allowed, you were able to run things like Eruption. However, since it's lacking a Fire type now, um, Precipice Blades is your best ground move, and the fact that it's 85% accuracy can sometimes bite you in the butt. I've seen some people circumvent this by running Wide Lens, but even then you don't have perfect accuracy and it can sometimes feel like the item is even, isn't even worth it. Uh, but I can tell you that if you do land a plus two Precipice Blades, whatever's on the other side of the field is not going to take it. So yeah, ground on a very solid Pokemon, uh, however I don't think it's really worth the restricted slot in a lot of situations. Next up is a Pokemon that I honestly don't think is that good, however has been seeing heavy usage, and this is Calyrex Shadow. Basically Calyrex Shadow is very very fast and very very strong. It's a fast version of Calyrex Ice, basically same offensive stats, uh, however it is much more frail and doesn't have quite as good coverage. Astral Barrage is great, it does so much damage, and it's hard to find a Pokemon that resists Ghosts in this format beyond P2 and Eveltal. It does have a really bad Eveltal matchup, and uh, with more and more Incineroar not running dark moves on them, uh, it's actually become a lot better, especially since it has access to Max Quake. Um, if you go for an Astral Barrage and actually get a KO, it's going to be able to do a ton of damage and likely net you plus one on your special attack since it has uh, the special version of the Calyrex ability. And at plus one, you're going to be able to deal with things like Incineroar with Max Quake and stuff. I would say matchup wise, it doesn't do very well versus a lot of things. I don't like the Zacian Crown matchup because uh, Zacian Crown likes to be run next to speed control Pokemon like Regieleki. If this thing is at minus one speed, Zacian Crown absolutely annihilates it. Kyogre also absolutely annihilates this thing if you get a Tailwind up. Groudon can deal with this thing with um, <clears throat> Venusaur by its side being able to put it to sleep. Honestly, <clears throat> I've used Calyrex Ice versus Calyrex uh, Shadow. And it isn't a terrible matchup, because if you run P2, like I do, like I don't think Dusclops Calyrex Ice is that great, I think P2 is a little bit better, specifically for dealing with the Calyrex Shadow. Um, it does make the matchup a lot easier since you get Trick Room up very, very easily. So I think Calyrex Shadow is pretty eh. Expanding Force is really strong, especially if you Dynamax and set up that um, Max Mindstorm Psychic Terrain stuff. So. Yeah, Calyrex Shadow can be threatening, but I feel it's very underwhelming in certain situations, especially with Rillaboom running around, not Rillaboom, uh, but especially with Urshifu running around, Sucker Punch is always a threat, so you need that Psychic Terrain to avoid that. But yeah, um, these are the top 5 Pokemon, I also am going to list off some usage stats, however the usage stats, I want to shout out this person on Twitter, uh, Tegan Stiga, they make really really cute usage stats boards uh, for all of the Players Cup top 16 stuff, so uh, I want to shout them out. You know, their ad is right here at Karaiku VGC. It's it's adorable. I just love this stuff. They made one for every single region and I used it to compile the stats. So yeah, uh, let me go over it real quick. So Zacian. Uh, we had four Zacians in top 16 for Oceana. This is top 16 usage stats. Uh, seven in EU. We had six in Latin America, five in North America, which led to 22 total Zacians. Kyogre had three in Oceana, three in Europe, four in Latin America, two in North America, which led to 12 in total. Calyrex Ice had three in Oceana uh, and one in North America, which led to four in total. Calyrex Shadow had two in Oceana, three in Latin America, and one in Latin America, oh, three in uh, Latin America and one in North America, which led to six in total. 
and Groudon had four in Europe, one in Latin America, and five in North America, which led to 10 in total. So in terms of top 16 players cup usage, it would go Zacian, Kyogre, Groudon, Calyrex Shadow, Calyrex Ice. So yeah, uh, that's the usage stats. I genuinely think that I have them in the right order right now. Uh, you can make a case for moving Groudon up. However, it isn't really Groudon that's carrying the team as much as it is the ability that's carrying the team. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.